Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We have another pattern for you today, the Patriotic Pride Throw. If you're not American or you don't wish to do the American colors, this blanket is still a lot of fun to make. Um, it is existing with the granny square that is in the middle here and then it builds out on both sides. So once you do one side, you turn it around and just do the other side out. So it's a really neat idea and uh, it's not really hard to do and uh, let's start, start to actually really diving into this pattern. So what we're looking at is that we need to build the centers out. So I have two already started. So the very first one when you go to do it, you're just gonna do a regular granny square. Then the next time you do it, you're going to attach and then the next one is gonna attach and you keep building. So if you wanna make this bigger, you just keep attaching more because the instructions are going up and down is the same all the way across. Now there is a difference between the, the rows that you'll do once you build out from this uh, phase and let me show you that next. Now as we kick out and we get these squares done, so they're all attached together through join as you go technique and then what's gonna happen is that th you'll see that the red here is single crochet or rows that are going up and down and then when you get to the other blue and white colors, you'll notice that's turning back to a granny square concept. So what you have to do is that you have to just keep on repeating and repeating so that you end up with consistency. So whatever colors you decide to do is completely up to you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get yourself started today we're going to be using uh, kicking off with two crochet hooks. The first one is a six millimeter size um, J hook and that's to do the main part of this uh, blanket and then the border is a smaller hook a size H which is a five millimeter. So let's uh, begin and let's start doing your square. So I'm gonna show you how to do the square and then uh, because I already have some of it already done, I'm just gonna demonstrate how that you would finish it if you wanted to and if you have to attach, I'll show you how to do that as well so you can do it all in one swaft. So as we begin today, we're gonna start off with a slip knot. Now this is an intermediate level, but if you're a beginner or easy uh, level person, this is really not that hard. You just have to just take it step by step. I'm gonna show you ways to hide in these ends without having to use a lot of tapestry needlework. So you're gonna chain four. So one, two, three, and four, and slip stitch to the beginning and yarning over and through to create the center ring. So when you go and do the first round, make sure that this straggler is then trapped around the ring so that it gets stuck. And now let's move on to round number one. Let's begin round number one. We're gonna chain three, so one, two, three. That counts as one double crochet. So you'll need to do two more double crochets into the center ring. So go right into the center of that ring and two more double crochets. So with the chain three and the two, that gives you the number three. So keep that in mind. To turn the corner, you're gonna chain two. So now you're gonna put three double crochets into the center of that ring. So one, two, and three. Then you wanna turn a corner again, so chain two. Center the ring again. And noticing that I'm going right up over top of that straggler, so it gets stuck underneath so I don't have to sew that in later. So you could put three more in. And then chain two and put the last side in. So three more double crochet. So one, two, and three. Now to finish this off, you wanna chain two and slip stitch it to the top of the first chain three. And what I want you to do, this end that I'm about to finish, watch what I do. Keep saying watch this, watch that. <laughs> so pull through and if you weave this in across to the next corner, you won't have to sew that in later. So just going in a top stitches, a top of the stitches, just back and forth, go all the way and pass around the last corner and if you do that, it'll get stuck right up underneath all of this stuff and go right into the corner chain stitches and then through the other side and then when you go and crochet over top of this, you're gonna notice it's completely missing. So then get rid of your loose ends now. So turn it over and then we're gonna begin round number two. There's only three rounds in this particular granny square. So we're gonna begin round number two. Now it states to begin and do this as a double crochet when you go to start and there's instructions for it but I'm gonna demonstrate it. It says join with the double crochet. It's a double crochet, it's a standing double crochet. So going into a chain two space, any one of them is good. Watch, I already have this on the hook and get it into your hands and pinching this so that it will not move around, wrap the hook and go right into this, uh, that chain two space. So there should be two loops on the hook 
and go right in. Go right up over top of the straggler so it gets stuck underneath and then pull through and then pull through two and two. That's a standing double crochet. So just go right up over top of that straggler so do two more double crochet and then chain two and keep going over top of that straggler. You might as well do the whole corner with that going right up over it and then it, it'll be completely gone and invisible. So the corner's done. So each of the corners are the same. So then you're gonna chain only one and then jump to the next corner. So it's gonna be three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Once that's done you're gonna chain one to jump to the next corner and same thing three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Now the joining is gonna happen in the next round so you don't have to worry about that yet. And the joining means join to the other granny squares. If it's the first one you don't have to worry about it on the first one. So go right up over top of that um, straggler that you see that you went over. See it's getting buried right up underneath. And then when you come around, so each corner is three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. You're just gonna chain one and then just slip stitch it to the top of the first standing double crochet. And the same way that I did before. So you're gonna trim and then just weave this in and go around the first corner. So go all the way back, just weaving in the ends in the top of the stitches and make sure you turn that corner. And then once you're done that you can just safely trim all your ends out. If you went up over top of this one like you were supposed to you'll be able to trim that down too. So let's move along to the final round. The final round can be done two ways. If it's your first time around then you will not attach and if it's you're attaching then you'll do something slightly different but no nothing really to worry about. So let's begin the next round. We're gonna do a standing double again in a corner. So choose a corner, any corner. Put it onto the hook first and then pinch and then wrap. So the very first corner I would not join it to any other uh, granny squares. Just keep that free and clear. So you're gonna do three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. And I would think about if you're gonna join it, join it on the next corner. So then chain one and then in the space in between just do one um, grouping of three double crochet. So chain one. So if this is your first one you're not gonna worry about joining at all. So you'll start your next corner. It'll be three double crochet chain two, three double crochet but if you're gonna join it you're gonna chain one and then grab your next one. So let me just back out here. So you're gonna grab the chaining, or the grouping of uh, double crochet or the grouping of squares. You wanna line it up and then you wanna join it on the same angle. So don't join it in an incorrect spot. So I've already just chained one. So slipping the hook underneath and then pull through and then chain one and then finish that corner. So it'll be three double crochet. So it's now permanently attached. It's a join as you go method. So you do not have to sew these together. So if you, if this is your first one you would have just worked only chain two and three double crochet in. So chain one and just keep on moving around. So you'll keep on adding. So you can add as many of these squares as possible that you would like to do. It's up to you. And then just continue to go all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round. So remember corners are three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, then chain one, three double crochet into the space in between and then corner and etc. So I'll see you at the end of this round. When you get all the way back around don't forget to chain one and then join it to the top of the first standing double. So you will just continue to make more of these squares and on the very last one I would actually take a tapestry needle and hide this last a straggler that I'm about to do. So I'll show you one time of how to do that. So just uh, turn it over 
to the back side and just feed the yarn into a tapestry needle. The last round of anything is kind of harder to weave it in because it does pop out. So just gliding it through the back side only. So don't let that needle hit the through the project to the front side. So if you turn it over and you see the needles on the other side then you've gone too deep. So just go through once and then slightly different path second time and then back one more time for a third time. And then that's it. So keep on adding more squares to your row and then what we're going to do then is then move on in this tutorial. The thing that you'll need to watch for is make sure that when you go to actually do it the first time that you don't end up with one upside down. So when you go to work across the first time you gotta make sure if one is twisted you just gotta make sure you untwist it and get it ready for then the first row of doing the fun stuff. So let's uh, begin with the color red and start with the next part. So I'm about to start the next row. So it doesn't matter how many of these that you have. If you wanna make it wider or smaller it's up to you if you want a baby size. So if I were you and you were, you were me what I would do is start the red and the red is consisting of two rows. And then what I would do because it's the way that you're starting and it's the only time you'll have to do it I would turn this over and then do the red on the other side as well because you'll remember how you how you've done it right away versus doing all one side and then going back to the instructions and trying to remember how you did it. So that's just an easier way to save time. So let's create a slip knot to begin and we're going to join to any chain two space on the edge. So it doesn't really matter which way these squares are up as long as uh, like this way or this way. Make like if it's the side or the side it doesn't really matter. So we just gotta make sure the squares are facing up so when you pass them make sure that's what you got. So you're gonna go in the chain two space in the corner and I want you to begin and we are going to come in and we're gonna do a standing uh, single. So just come in, pull through and then pull through two. That's a standing single crochet. This row is actually really really easy. So each double crochet and chain one space are each going to get a, a single crochet. So go right up over top of the straggler, trap it right underneath. You don't need to think about counting but just remember everything was in groups of three if that helps you and go right into the chain one space and then continue along. Once you've gone over that straggler enough then you can just tuck it out of the way and just finish it off later. So go right into the space and then coming into the next double. So you're at the top of a peak. So at the top of the peaks nice and easy is gonna be one single crochet, chain two. This will allow you to turn the corner and then single crochet back in. So now you're gonna work down. So if you look at it from an up and down perspective. So one single crochet in each of the stitches including the chain one spaces. So the trick is is when you jump to the next square you wanna make sure that it's facing up. The right side is facing up and you just wanna jump across when you're ready. So you're just gonna single crochet in each one of these and then in the chain two space you're going to single crochet like there and then you'll single crochet in this chain two space of the next square and make sure that it is facing up. So just like that. So you're just gonna work your way up again. So one single crochet in each chain one or stitch and chain one space. In the top it's gonna be a single crochet, chain two, single crochet, one single in each stitch. Make sure that you do come and put a single crochet in these chain two spaces, one on each side and then keep on going all the way across and I'll see you at the end of this row. Now eventually you'll get to the other side. You have a lot wider than me and you're gonna single crochet right in that last chain two space and then you're done. So you've just gone all the way up and down. So now you're going to turn your work and we're going to begin round number, or row number two which will be the start of a repeat. So when we do the repeating this is the next part that you'll start at. Now because this is a wave and you need the edges to be flat you always have to start off with putting two stitches together as one and then you have to worry about in the center here of putting two stitches together as one as well. So let's uh, begin and we're going to start and you're gonna chain one and you're gonna put the first two stitches together as a single crochet two together. So just going right into the first stitch, pull through and don't finish it and go right into the next one, pull through and then pull through all three loops. 
Now it's just easy. You're just going to single crochet your way all the way to the top. So you don't have to worry about skipping anything and so it's just a first stitch that you have to worry about so that you can keep that angle perfect. Now in the top what do you think you're going to do? I'll give you a second to think about it. So in the top it's gonna be like before. So you're gonna come into the last stitch here and now the chain two space is gonna be one single crochet, chain two and one single crochet. And then you're gonna come down. So what we have to watch for the most is that we have to watch where these ones are right in the center. So let's uh, just discover that next. So after we just turned the corner we're going to single crochet only the next 11. So you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So now here's where we are and we've got two stitches before the uh, the bend and two stitches after. So where do you think we're gonna have to go? So the next two are gonna become two together. So wrap in the hook and then go into the next one. So this is the same side square and then you pull through and now you do the next two together and like so. So the two last two on this side are two together and then the first two on this side are two together. So then you're just gonna work your way up again to the next point and then in the next point it's gonna be a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Then you come down 11 and then it's the last four. So these two will come two together, the first two, two together and going up. So what I'll do is I'll leave this for you and then I'll see you at the very end of this row. When you get to the end of the row just remake sure the last two stitches are two together. So that was row number two. So you're gonna turn and do one more row of this red and is exactly what we just did. So we're just going to start and we're gonna chain one and we're gonna put the first two together. So one and two and you're going to double crochet or sorry single crochet yourself all the way up back to the top and then in the top you're going to single crochet, chain two, single crochet and then you're gonna come back down. So down you have to worry about the last two stitches on this side and the first two stitches on this side. So let's count it out. There should be 11 before we get there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So you can see you got two more before you do the turn. So put those two together and then put the first two together that's on this side. And then you'll work your way all the way to the top. So I don't worry about counting to the top. You, you have your single crochet, chain two single crochet and then again the last two on this side, two together, first two, two together and then go up and then I'll see you at the end. And this will be the last time we do this particular color uh, for this particular moment. So what I would do then is turn this upside down and do the other side because you'll remember how to do it right now uh, versus having to doing one side and then having to go back in the instructions to review once again. Your call, you decide what works for you. When you get to the end, the last two are together and then that's it. So that'll be the end of this color. You should start seeing this going up on a straight, pretty close to a straight line. So you're gonna finish that color and what I'm gonna do for myself is that I am going to just weave this in and then I'm gonna flip this upside down and restart so that the other side already has this strip. It'll help me remember and it'll look a little more stable as well. So if you wanna stabilize your afghan instead of being so flexible you can do the other side and then it will be more flat. So just turning it up over and then starting in your first chain two space and then going up and just like we did before. So let's uh, continue to do this and uh, you can just reverse back the video. So this is rows number two and three once again just for this side. So we're gonna get ourselves started and right now we're going to then uh, begin and we're gonna be working along this single crochet row and you can see that we're gonna use the, the lighter blue and then you'll see the next uh, colors then darker blue, white, 
darker blue, light blue, and then three rows of this um, red then comes back into play. So this is our color sequence. So rows number two through nine is going to take you through the steps in order to do it and then once you get that done you just keep on repeating. So let's begin row number four. So as promised I did both sides. Now when you go to return back and you start row number four you have to make sure you're looking at the right side. So when you looked at, looked at this you did the right side first and then you did the wrong side and then the right side. So technically if you were following the sequence of turning back and forth we should be starting on the wrong side. But in this case row number four says with the right side facing. So we're gonna just turn it over. So make sure you're looking at the right side of these and then we're gonna begin on this side. So you'll do the same for the other side once you get there. So let's begin row number four. So let's begin number four. You wanna start off with the standing double in the second chain from the hook. So you just to do that you're just gonna put it onto the hook, rotate around, make sure you're pinching it and go to the second and pull through, pull through two and two. So notice that that's the second one. So when we're going up and down so you'll be in the second ones as well going up on the other sides. So you're gonna put two more double crochets into that same one. Okay and then you're gonna then continue up. So chain one and you're going to jump over three. So one, two, three, go to the fourth and put in three double crochets. So one, two, three. Then chain one, skip over three, one, two, three, go to the fourth, double crochet. So you will notice that when you're coming up and down so you'll have three groups. Chain one and then do the top. So jumping over three, so one, two, three takes you to the chain one, chain two space and double crochet three times and you're gonna turn so you're gonna chain two and then three into the same one. So let's go down. So the thing you need to watch for is that the first single crochet always gets buried underneath what appears to be the corner. So the first one is actually right there. So one, two, three, go to the fourth. So make sure you chain one first and then going into the fourth. So one, two, three, four. So three double crochet there. So one, two, three, and then chain one and skip three. So one, two, three, go to the fourth and keep doing that all the way down. Okay, chain one, skip one, two, three, go to the fourth and so now we're at the bottom of the valley. To keep it consistent then you're not gonna chain one, skip over the two base ones here and go to the second one that's leading up the hill and put in three double crochets so you're not chaining one at all. That'll keep it folding together. And then chain one, skipping three, so one, two, three, go to the fourth. And then chain one, skipping one, two, three, go to the fourth. And then chain one. So skipping one, two, three, go to the fourth which is the top of the point. So three double crochet, two chain, three double crochet. So you're just gonna do that all the way across to get yourself started just like that and I will see you at the end of this. So just go up and down and I'll see you at the last particular spot. So now just coming down to the other side and I'm just gonna go one, two, three and it's the second last one on this side as well that you'll end up with putting three double crochets in and that's it. So you wanna finish off your work there. So you may want to use a tapestry needle in order to make it look good and uh, I'm just gonna weave it in just for tutorial sake today. And then I'm gonna turn my work and change my color and in this case it's gonna be a darker blue and then we're gonna begin the regular granny uh, square work going up and down until you have to get back to this red section which will be single crochet. So turn your work and then let's begin row number five. To begin row number five you're going to start off in this chain one space here. So not the end, just right there and you wanna do a standing double. So let's do that. So let's get your yarn, pinch and going right in, pull through, 
pull through, pull through two and two and leave this straggler down on top of the line so it gets stuck underneath and put in two more double crochet there. And then chain one and you're gonna work your way back up the peak. So it'll be two into the next one or sorry three double crochets in the next. Chain one and etc. So it's like before you'll have three groups going up the hill and then you'll go on the peak of the hill so that in the top chain two space is gonna be three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So then coming down the other side so chain one first, come to the next space chain one. So there's only gonna be three groups going down. So this is the third one. It's gonna be the last one before we start going on the up. This one here we do not chain one once we get that done and immediately so you skip over the two middle ones and go right here. So one, two, three. That's your three going up. So just skip over the middle two and double crochet the next space there three times. So it allows it to turn and then chain one and then going up. So that's all you need to do. So this whole section now of this granny square is done the same way. So there's really nothing special about it but the difference is, is that eventually we're gonna have to get back to the single crochet which I will cover and then that'll be the conclusion of today's tutorial. We will uh, quickly review the border as well. So just continuing to go up and down and I'll see you at the end of this round, uh, row. So eventually you're gonna work your way through the sequence. So you'll have white next and then darker blue and then this blue and then red will come back into place. So I'm gonna leave that for you. So eventually you're gonna have to come back to the single crochet rows again. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you're gonna come into the first space and then just do, it, do a standing single and you're just gonna single crochet in each of the next um, double crochets and chain one spaces. So go right into a space. The trick is now that we have the granny square established is that we have to worry about how they're gonna be in the center right here and, and when I say worry I just mean that we just have to watch how we do that. So you're just gonna go all the way up and then in the top peaks it's like before. So it's single crochet, chain two, single crochet and then come down. So you, when you're just going down in every double crochet and chain one space until you get to the space before the last two on the base. So this is uh, considered row number nine. So if you were following it along in the pattern and then you'll pick it up with two and three and two and three is exactly what you did in here. Okay, so now that you come to that space, you're gonna skip the next six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So skip those two and single crochet into the space over here. So that brings everything nice and tight together. And then you're just working your way up and then single crochet, chain two, and then coming down. And again, you skip over the two middle, single crochet in each space on either, either side and then that will bring it together. So we're gonna quickly cover the border next and uh, so you'll do uh, your three rows of this color and then you'll go back to your sequence. Now when you, before you get to the border you're gonna notice that you're only going to um, repeat rows two through five when you're ready for the border so that the white color becomes your final border. So the white will then fill in just like you see the grannies and then you're gonna just evenly line it up along the sides um, just with equally spacing some single crochets and working your way down. So I'll cover that in just a moment. So eventually you'll come to your rows number two through five which will be your last one for the border. So you're just gonna go through your sequence. So white is gonna be the end. So let's just say that I come all the way across. So I've just started and I'm doing the up and down motion in the white like I normally would and when you do and turn this upside down you'll do that same thing on the other side. So both sides need to be complete and ready for the final border. So let's just say that I've done that. I'm just gonna join it here in the end and I'll just show you this. So all you just need to do is down the sides is just worry about equally spacing as you're working all the way down. So let's just consider this. Chain one. Chain 
one. So this is the last space before the end or at the end sorry. So this is the last space. So all you just need to do from this point is just equally space then some single crochets. So you're just gonna come down, come down the side of the post and just equally space out your single crochets. And you're just working along your edge. Just take your time, equally space it. It's about two single crochets. Sometimes you have to put an extra third one in there if you see some buckling going on. But you're just equally spacing. The nice thing about the red sections is that each row e is a single crochet. So each row is automatically going to get a single crochet. So it's kind of more obvious than it is in these. So you're just gonna come all the way down to the other side and then eventually you'll come back and then you'll be on this side and then you'll just kick off and you'll start in the first gap and do your white as normal like the granny square uh, concept going up and down and then you'll end up back to where you started. So it's kind of a neat way to doing it and it's just a matter of equally spacing out. There's a lot of words to describe that particular motion but the fact is it's really not that hard at the end of the day. So hopefully you have some patriotic pride if this has been another color for you. Please enjoy your afghan. We'd love to see your creativity on Facebook and until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at yarnspirations.com. Bye bye.